Hello, my name is Neil Davidson and I'm the founder of Raw Umber Studios. Welcome to another online portrait drawing session. This video mimics the structure of a regular life drawing class. We'll show you three photographs on the screen, one for 10 minutes, one for 20 minutes, and one for 30 minutes. And it's your job to draw the photograph that you see. Lizette Dingham will be joining us. She'll be doing a demonstration in the bottom corner of the screen and giving hints and tips. Once you've finished, don't forget to post your work to Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber live. Right, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to another Raw Umber video. This week we've got a super cool model I'm very excited to draw. So let's get started with the basics. So I've already divided my paper up into uh, where I want him on the paper, plus I've divided up into halves and then halves again, so quarters. And when I look, I see that his um, sides, his cheekbones are exactly one quarter wide. And also it's very important when you look at likenesses is what's the widest point in their face. And for him, I see he's got a heart shaped face. So his chin is about one quarter as well. Then his cheekbones are the widest point and then it sort of goes straight-ish towards the top of his head. And I'm going to go straight in and put some shadows in. So I'm going to start with his hairline. And next is his nose and eye sockets. Sockets usually come to about halfway to the nose. And I like to just sort of put them in completely with a big shade and then cut out the bridge of the nose later. The ears are usually between the top of the eye socket and the bottom of the nose. And then you've got a nice sort of generalized head. And this is what I use for almost all my portraits. And now what I'm going to do is adjust some of my angles to make it look a little bit more like him. So for instance, he's got a slightly more narrow forehead. Next, I'm putting in all the dark shapes. So the light's coming from the right, so most of his uh, face is in shadow on the left-hand side. When looking at how wide someone's nose is, I like to think in terms of eye sockets. So in his case, his nose is one eye socket wide.
Next, what I like to do is blend everything with a brush. You can also use a stump or your fingers for this. And I just like it because it gets rid of some of the texture of the paper, which means that um, it doesn't distract me as much and I can just see my drawing with a fresh eye. Now I see my drawing with a fresh eye, I see that there's a little bit of distortion in his uh, chin area, it needs to come over a little bit, that sort of thing. So I spend a little bit of time just correcting what I've done earlier. For the 10 minute pose, I want to delve a little bit deeper into the eye, the anatomy of the eye. So I'm going to start developing one of the eyes a little bit more clearly. And the first thing that I always put in is the corners of the eye. The outer corner is usually a little bit higher than the inner corner, but just for clarity's sake, we can make them on the same line. And on both sides, there will be a light um, shape that sort of cuts into the eye socket on, on that uh, corner. Next, there is that darker shade of the brow. So the brow is most dense at the beginning of the brow and gets more sparse towards the outside. So usually the inside of the eye socket has more shadow, partly because of that dense brow, but also because it's deeper set. Now, most of the eye socket is in shade, it's receding, it's in a hollow, but um, there are some lights that come out and that's usually the top of the lid and the bottom of the lower lid. Sorry, the top of the lower lid. So those shapes are really useful to put in. And so you can see that even when I don't draw more than that, you already start seeing an eye in there. And that's because we've got the most important elements sorted. Now what you can do on top of that is put all the receding um, dark accents in. So for instance, the fold on top of his eyelid, um, the more dark area of the bottom of his top eyelid. And these things sort of, if you have a dark accent there, it makes it feel like it goes even more deep. So it feels like an occlusion shadow. Thank you. 
And then finally, I add the iris in. And the iris is a simple circle that's usually partly obstructed by the lower and as, as well as the top uh, eyelid. It's, I say usually there are exceptions when someone is surprised, their, their lids will be wider. So you might see the whole of the iris, but usually you won't see that. Okay, so here we are for the second pose. And like I said in the 10-minute pose, I'm just going to start by placing them on the paper. And some of you might be familiar with my box method. What it basically means is that um, you use one flat plane for the front of his head and one flat plane for the side of his head. In this case, I've also added a little line for his shoulders because he's got such a cool like sort of angle to them. So looking at the plane of his head, the front of his head, it's a little bit wider than the plane of the side of his head. So he's turned more towards us. I'm just going to widen that a little bit. And then I'm going to start looking for the midpoints. The midpoint of the front plane is pretty easy. It's the corners of his eyes. So you can take that horizontal line for the corners of his eyes. Um, the side plane you can see goes down because you can take that line from the corner of the eye to the um, ear, the whole of the ear. So I'm going to start with my general face shape and that's just you usually at the um, eye socket it goes inwards so the eye socket recedes. The chin is usually a little bit more narrow than the cheekbones like we said in the 10 minute pose. So I'm going to put that in. Then I simply round off the skull at the top and I place the ear behind the halfway mark on the side of the side plane. The jaw will come in front of the ear. Okay, so let's put the most prominent features in. So like it in the 10 minute pose, I'm going to start with the eye socket, just sort of generally filling that in with some shadow and then follow that by the nose and the mouth. And for me, it's really useful to see where they're located. So I, for instance, compare the forehead to the nose to the brow. And that usually is a third each. Like we established in the 10 minute pose, his nose is about one eye socket wide. Next, I will go in with my rubber and cut out his eye sockets a little bit more precisely. And one thing to note with this is that symmetry is very important. So if a certain angle occurs in one eye socket, it should also occur in the other eye socket. Otherwise, he might look a bit wonky. Afterwards, um, I can start putting in the big mass of the hair, as well as his beard. 
And again, symmetry is very important. So make sure that, for instance, the point of his hair is nicely in the middle of his forehead, following the center line. Okay, so now we've got a bit of a general face shape and I'm going to start breaking the shapes down to make them a little bit more like him. So I'm going to make small angle cha changes in the nose, for instance, as well as in the lip and in the eye sockets. And again, I'm going to use the brush just to sort of give myself a more clean surface to work on. And with lips, what generally happens is they go up in the middle and they sort of recede downwards towards the corners and then the corners go up again. And of course, this depends on the person, how much they go, uh, how much they curve up or how flat they are. So always just check how that compares to the nose, for instance. Another thing that happens with the lips is that because the face turns round, the middle of the lip will usually not be in shadow, even though it is a receding plane, it will catch a little bit more light. 
so the corners will usually be the darkest area. With the eyes, we've already established that you need to have two square corners of lights where the corners of the eyes are. And then that's a nice place where you can start putting in the top lid, for instance, and that darker area for the brow. And as you can see, I'm just re-establishing a little bit of the contour line as well. And the more I make these small changes, the more it starts looking like him. So I always like working from very, very general to more specific. working on um, brown paper I've got the luxury of being able to add a little bit of white chalk for the highlights now this is uh, one thing that with highlights when someone is more pale the highlight will be bigger and softer and the darker someone's skin is the highlight will be more um, bright and compressed so I'm just adding a little bit of highlight just at where that breaking point of the skull plane is so I'm just removing the lines there and I'm replacing them with my highlights. One thing that's also fun when you've got somebody with grey hair, the chalk will go a little bit bluish when you put it directly over charcoal. So I don't usually like doing that in the skin because I don't want blue skin. But if you've got someone with grey hair, that actually can look quite nice.
and like I said in the 10 minute pose, I'm just putting the pupil in or the iris in last. So it's just a process of going from general to specific and getting more and more specific and adding more and more uh, accents as you go along. Okay, so here we are for the 13 minute pose and I'm personally really excited about this one. I think it's a really cool pose. So I'm first going to put him on the paper the same way as I did before.
and um, and again I'm using my box method. So the width should be exactly half of the height. The side plane goes down. You can see that by the ear hole compared to the corner of the eye. And it should be less than one half of the, of the front plane. Now, because he's looking up slightly, you can see quite a lot of his chin. What we're gonna have to do is really make sure to measure all of the features because you're gonna have a proportionally smaller forehead and a bigger chin because we're looking from, the, from down to up. So what I see is that his eyes are still exactly in the middle and his forehead, because he's looking up, slants backwards. Next, I'm going to measure all the other features. So when I go for the corners of his eyes and I divide the lower half of his face into exact thirds, I see one third being the bottom of the shadow of his nose and one other third, the bottom of his top lip. And then when I checked very conveniently, that same measurement of the nose to the eyes was also the same measurement as the eyes to the brow, as well as the brow to the forehead and the hair as a mass was the same measurement as well. So next I'm going to go in and put my darker shapes everywhere, as well as his neck. So now we've got a general sort of head and like I did in the 20 minute pose, I am going to start by figuring out what the shapes do exactly. Of course, um, the eye sockets aren't a 
perfect square. So I'm going to try and break it down to make it look more like him. First, I'm going to blend everything with the brush like I like to do. And next I can start carving with the rubber and putting accents in with my charcoal. So for instance with the nose, I can see on both uh, sides the wings sort of come out, have a widest point and then narrow back in. So I'm just going to put that in as a nice clear shadow shape. And I'm going to work my way down from the eye sockets to the top lip and so I get all the features done.
So the features were basically the same things that I said about the 20 minute pose, um, the darker area for the brows, the corners of the mouth being a little lower than the uh, middle of the mouth. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put in his beard. So because I'm using a bit of chalk, and this is completely optional, I'm just using the chalk to highlight just the points where um, his front plane of his head turns into the side plane. Highlights usually sit on those high points where the light really bounces off, where, the, where something turns into a different direction.
Next, I'm going to get into the eye. So similar to what I was breaking down in a 10 minute pose, I start by making sure I've got those corners of the eyes and a light shape of that nailed down so I know where his eye is going to be sort of clicking in. Once I've got those two points out, I can use a darker accent to figure out where the top lid is turning under and a light accent using my rubber to uh, figure out where the light point is on the top lid and the lower lid.
And so I do the same thing with the other eye as well. So I'm first going to figure out where exactly the corners of the eyes are. And they should, of course, be symmetrical. So I try to follow along that same line of the other eye. And once I know where they're going to be in my mind's eye, I can start putting that darker accent in for the top lid and a slightly lighter accent for the top of the top lid and the top of the bottom lid. So what I tried to show you this session is that there are some basic shapes that will come back in almost every portrait. And those shapes are pretty universal. They will change slightly from person to person, but there will always be, for instance, a slightly darker area just above the brow. And that's super useful because you don't need to actually put that much effort into finding all the different small shapes if you know which shapes to already look for.
So I hope that was useful and enjoyable as well. And hopefully I will see you next week. Thank you for taking part. Don't forget to photograph your work and post it on Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber live. I'd like to thank Lizette Dingermans for drawing along with us today and you can download the photographs you've seen in this week's session from the link I'm about to show you on the screen. We run free portrait drawing sessions every Sunday at 2pm and figure drawing sessions every Wednesday at 8pm. We're now offering a raw umber subscription where you can watch all our figure drawing sessions past, present and future for under £10 a month. See our website for more details.